Hello, this is Marty. I wanted to do a video of one of my special World War II radio receivers. I have it on right now, and I do have it on a radio station. And I have to play it through the headphones because I need an output transformer to play it on a regular speaker. It's got to, it has to use a high uh, impedance output transformer. Um, picks up a couple of radio stations. It's very sharp receiver as far as picking up stations. And it picks up a couple other stations, but this morning it's a little bit noisy. But here's a here's a picture of the dial. And you just turn the dial and the needle shows what location you want to go to. There's six bands. Goes down to fifteen kilocycles all the way up to five hundred and sixty kilocycles. Uh, on on radio frequency, it picks up uh, WFRB and it'll pick up uh, Disney and it'll pick up the airport sta airport station in 300 kilocycles. It's a model RBL-6, as you can see the tag here. Um, it's a Navy radio. It was made during World War II. It's a TRF regenerative set. It has it has. Uh, one, two, yeah, has three stage RF amplifier sections, three RF amplifiers. Each one of these tubes is an RF amplifier. And then it has a regenerative detector. That's that tube there. And then it also has um, the, the little black tube, if you can see it. That's the... Uh, automatic noise limiter I don't know if I can get it right there we go that's the automatic noise limiter then this is the audio output tube and then the tube in the back that's lit up is the rectifier tube has a fairly large tuning condenser uh, that's just as you see the plates move this is how you tune in the radio station and I'm hoping I'm getting it right it's hard for me to see there we go I want to make sure that I'm getting uh, good video action on the components. This is your uh, tuning uh, condenser. Very big compared to the little square white boxes you see in transistor radios. Uh, this receiver weighs about 100 pounds. These are various, uh, This I think this is the in and output transformer, and that's part of the power supply. That's, that's, the, uh, that's the power supply transformer. These are the RF coils very big I'm gonna take off a can and show you what the coil looks like that is one of, that is one of the uh, RF coils my video camera this particular model don't have a flash so I'm hoping I'm getting everything quite well uh, that is one of the, that's what the tuning can uh, the uh, antenna coil looks like there's three of them in the set and uh, they're sealed it underneath these big cans very unique set very large components these little boxes that you see are uh, ceramic capacitors they never go bad they're ceramic condensers is what they are and uh, see if I can get a close up of one of the blocks you know, about, that's about as close as I can get with this camera I like the idea that some of the components are marked with the National Company. I forgot this. It, this was made by National Corporation, National Radio Corporation. Uh, and I keep getting in the light. Darn it! There we go. See the NC symbol. This radio is very, very big. Um, it doesn't look like any average transistor radio. I assure you of that. Very nice set, very old, like I said, World War II, we'll get back down to picking up some kind of a radio station.
sounds a lot better sounds a lot better in uh, the headphones but that's it that's my radio receiver I have an article I want to read real quick about this particular radio receiver it is an, it is a national product it's an RBL series uh, long way TRF generator receiver and was uh, built for the Navy during World War II the RBL uses a seven tube circuit covering 15 kilocycles up to 600 kilocycles in six bands the tube tube lineup consists of three cascaded 6SK R7s that's those tubes right there we'll do a lot better that's 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 the RF tubes RF amplifiers then we had the 6S G7 that's that tube right down there in the corner um, there we go 6S 6S G7 regenerative uh, uh, audio dyne detector a 686 86 audio limiter uh, that's that tube that little black tube there on the right hand side if I can get a good look at it there we go that's that's that is the uh, that is the audio limiter and a 6k 6g tube that's this tube here that's lit up that there's the audio uh, amplifier and then we have a rectifier tube in the back one that's that one lit right there we can, we can barely see it but it's there uh, unlike the RAO that resembles the RBL which is this radio receiver right here that I have this is the RAO receiver uh, the RBL's receiver band switch does not operate with a movable cone that's what the upper receiver has that, but I wouldn't be able to say anything on that because I'd have to tear it apart. And I have other pictures anyhow, but um, it's, it's, it's not a removable coral caddy comb assembly. Instead, an, an intricate set of gears simultaneously actuates, actuates two large ceramic band switches. Also, unlike any of the World War II long wave receivers the RBL series has direct frequency readout that's what you're seeing here on the Dow that's that that is uh, direct that's direct frequency readout right there that's what they call direct frequency readout that's where I can turn my hand and set the needle at whatever frequency I want the uh, Dow indicator um, The receiver also include a selectable broad or sharp switch, which is right there, and uh, a, a well, it's a broad and sharp audio filter and an adjustable output limiter, which is this control right here, for operation during intense static operations, which it does works pretty good. It, it eliminates a lot of the static that I get in the receiver when I try to pick up some radio stations. This here is a limiter control, which is very well, uh, very well designed and works wonders at reducing static burst. Audio output is via the earphone jack on the front of the panel and is for 500 to 600 zoom on uh, uh, impedance headphones which is what I have here and it's heavy duty definitely heavy, heavy duty construction it weighs a hundred pounds it has um, a fully sealed cabinet that is copper and is plated under the black wrinkled finish that's what the black wrinkled finish looks like and the RBL DAS 5 uh, it's from 1944 it's in excellent condition and uh, it's a it has first-rate performance when used with a 10 foot in diameter tuned loop antenna which I don't have it I got it connected to a long wire outside and uh, it's a good performer and it covers the low wave spectrum and uh, it uh, worked really well for its time Thank you, and this is the end of the video.